Have you ever wondered if what we've been taught about the serpent in the Garden of Eden is really true? The serpent has long been linked to Satan, the devil, but what if this connection isn't as clear as it seems? What if the Bible never actually says the serpent is Satan? The serpent's role in the story of Adam and Eve is well known. He tempts Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, leading to the fall of man. But here's the thing, the Bible doesn't explicitly identify the serpent as Satan. So, how did this idea become so deeply ingrained in Christian thought? The story of the serpent in Genesis 3 is one of the most famous narratives in the Bible. However, when we examine the text closely, we find that there is no direct mention of the serpent being Satan. This raises questions about how this interpretation came to be and what it tells us about the development of religious beliefs. In Genesis 3, the story of the serpent is one of the most intriguing and complex narratives in the Bible. The serpent is described as a cunning creature, one that engages Eve in a conversation that ultimately leads to the downfall of humankind. The serpent's words to Eve are simple yet powerful. You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3 verses 4 to 5. This statement tempts Eve, and she eats the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, sharing it with Adam, which leads to the famous fall. However, what's particularly interesting is that, within this passage, the serpent is never explicitly identified as Satan or the devil. The serpent's identity has sparked countless debates and discussions over the centuries. Many people today assume that the serpent is Satan, but this interpretation was not originally part of the Genesis text. In fact, the idea that the serpent is Satan likely originates from a verse in the New Testament, specifically in Revelation 12 verse 9. This verse refers to Satan as that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. This verse has strongly influenced Christian thought, leading many to retrospectively connect the Genesis serpent with Satan. However, this connection was made centuries after the Genesis account was written, and it wasn't always seen this way in the early interpretations of the text. Early Jewish interpretations of the Genesis serpent varied widely, reflecting a rich tapestry of thought within the Jewish tradition. Some rabbis viewed the serpent as a literal animal, a crafty creature created by God that played a specific role in the story. Others saw the serpent as a symbol of human temptation, representing the inner struggle between following God's commandments and succumbing to desire. Still, others interpreted the serpent as a metaphor for the evil inclination, the part of human nature that leans towards sin. In these early Jewish interpretations, the serpent was not universally linked with Satan, and the idea of the serpent being the devil was not a widespread belief. The serpent's imagery and symbolism extend beyond Genesis and appear elsewhere in the Bible and other ancient Near Eastern texts. Serpents are often depicted as creatures of chaos, evil, or rebellion against divine order. For instance, in Psalm 74 verses 13 to 14, God is described as crushing the heads of Leviathan, a multi-headed sea serpent, symbolizing God's victory over chaos. Similarly, in Job 26 verse 13, God's power is depicted as having pierced the fleeing serpent, another image of God's dominance over chaos and disorder. These references to serpents are part of a broader ancient mythology that often associates serpents with chaos and disorder, but not necessarily with Satan. The serpent in Genesis fits within this broader context of serpentine symbolism, which complicates the direct connection to Satan. The development of the association between the serpent in Genesis and Satan is a fascinating journey through religious and cultural history. This connection didn't appear overnight, rather, it evolved over time, 
influenced by various religious and cultural factors. In early Christianity, this association was strengthened by the writings of church fathers who sought to interpret the Old Testament through the lens of the New Testament. For example, Justin Martyr, an early Christian apologist, argued that the serpent in Genesis was indeed Satan. He drew on the verse from Revelation and other biblical passages to support this interpretation. His writings and those of other early church fathers played a significant role in cementing the idea of the serpent as Satan in Christian thought. Gnostic traditions, which often diverged from mainstream Christian teachings, also influenced the perception of the serpent. Some Gnostic sects saw the serpent as a positive figure, a bringer of knowledge and enlightenment who defied a tyrannical god to offer humanity wisdom. This interpretation contrasts sharply with the traditional Christian view, where the serpent is seen as a deceiver and a source of sin. However, it illustrates how interpretations of the serpent varied widely in the early centuries of Christianity, with different groups offering different perspectives based on their theological views. By the time the Book of Revelation was written in the late 1st century AD, the idea of the serpent as Satan had gained traction, but it was still not universally accepted. The imagery of the ancient serpent in Revelation likely drew on earlier mythological concepts, such as Leviathan or the sea serpents of Mesopotamian mythology, rather than directly referencing the Genesis serpent. These earlier mythological images of serpents as chaotic and malevolent beings provided a framework for understanding the serpent in Revelation, but they didn't necessarily link directly back to the Genesis narrative. It's fascinating to consider how these interpretations evolved and how they reflect the broader cultural and religious contexts of the time. The early church was heavily influenced by Jewish traditions, but it also absorbed ideas from Greco-Roman culture, Gnosticism, and other religious movements. This melting pot of influences helped shape the way the Bible was interpreted and understood by early Christians. Over time, the identification of the serpent with Satan became more common, especially as the Christian doctrine of original sin developed. This doctrine, which held that humanity inherited sinfulness from Adam and Eve's disobedience, reinforced the idea of the serpent as a malevolent force aligned with Satan. As we explore these different interpretations, it becomes clear that the identification of the serpent with Satan is not as straightforward as it might seem. The connection developed over time, influenced by various religious and cultural factors, and was not originally part of the Genesis text. This evolving interpretation invites us to question other long-held beliefs and to explore the Bible with fresh eyes. What other interpretations might we uncover if we look beyond the traditional readings? How might this deepen our understanding of the text and its relevance to our lives today? The story of the serpent in Genesis is a rich and complex narrative that has been interpreted in many different ways throughout history. While the association with Satan has become the dominant interpretation in Christian thought, it is not the only one, and it is worth considering the other perspectives that have emerged over time. By doing so, we can gain a richer and more nuanced understanding of this ancient and powerful story. So. What does all of this mean for our understanding of the serpent in Genesis? It suggests that the identification of the serpent with Satan is not as clear-cut as many might believe. The connection between the serpent and Satan developed gradually over time, influenced by various religious and cultural factors, and was not part of the original Genesis text. This realization challenges us to rethink some long-held beliefs. If the serpent in Genesis wasn't originally seen as Satan, what else might we be misunderstanding? The Bible, after all, is a complex text with layers of meaning. Over the centuries, interpretations have shifted, influenced by historical context, theological debates, and cultural changes. As we look deeper into the text, 
we might uncover interpretations that were overlooked or misunderstood in the past. Exploring these alternative interpretations can deepen our understanding of the Bible and its relevance to our lives today. It encourages us to approach the text with fresh eyes, questioning what we think we know and being open to new insights. For example, if the serpent in Genesis is not Satan, then what does the serpent represent? Could it symbolize something within human nature, like temptation or the struggle between good and evil? Reflecting on the story of the serpent also highlights the importance of examining our beliefs. Many of the ideas we hold about the Bible have been passed down through tradition and may not always align with the original text. By being open to new perspectives, we can gain a fuller understanding of the Bible's teachings and how they apply to our lives. The serpent in Genesis is a mysterious and enigmatic figure that has been interpreted in many different ways throughout history. While the association with Satan has become the dominant interpretation in Christian thought, it is not the only one. By considering other perspectives and questioning traditional interpretations, we can gain a richer and more nuanced understanding of this ancient and powerful story. This journey of exploration and discovery allows us to connect more deeply with the text and appreciate the Bible's wisdom in a new light. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey. If you found this video enlightening, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more insights into biblical stories and their hidden meanings.